Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to the bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from an anonymous caller. Let's listen to what they have to say. Hi, Lloyd. I am a fourth generation Java witness. You can play this recording on your channel. I'll be honored. <laughs> I'm a fourth generation Java witness. I'm still actually still, um, I'm still in the Java witness organization. I'm trying to figure out how to get out <laughs> without, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get out, but I haven't been going to meeting now for maybe four or five months. And I've obviously like had the elders on my neck. They're trying to get me back, but I'm mostly calling today because well, let me give you a little bit of background. So it all happened during COVID. I just had my daughter. I just had my daughter at the time. And I went through postpartum depression. So I was really depressed. I was going through the motion, trying to figure out how to deal with depression. And so, of course, you know, as a Joe witness, instead of going to a professional, we go to the website and try to look up information. And basically, she's telling me, do not be anxious you know, Jehovah, we should look to Jehovah all our problems. We should pray to Jehovah and leave things to Jehovah and he would take care of it. And that wasn't working. So I went to the elders and then the elders did a shepherding call for me. And then they pray and then they read a few scriptures telling me to take my time and relax and pray to Jehovah and don't be anxious. And I'm like, how does people not be anxious? And so then I started feeling guilty because I, no matter how many times I read these things and how many times the elders say these things, I still feel anxious and I still feel depressed. So then I felt ungrateful to Jehovah. And then of course, because I married a guy who is not a Jehovah witness, I already had that guilt over the years. That just kind of makes it even worse because then I'm feeling bad, feeling guilty, thinking that I'm being punished because I married a guy who is not a Jehovah witness. And then I reached back out to the elders. They started a study for me, even though I am a Jehovah Witness and I'm, I'm a baptized witness. They still started a study because they thought it was going to be good for my spirituality to help me. It just made me even more guilty, more depressed. And it was just not helping, Lloyd. It was just, it was just me just hating myself because this, why is this not working? Why am I not spiritual enough? Why am I not spiritual enough to know that I shouldn't be depressed? I feel bad because I am depressed that reflects bad on Jehovah. Why am I doing this? And that just, it just, it was like a spiral. Well, it was a spiral. And so then one day I somewhere across critical fingers on, on YouTube randomly. And then somehow like they talk about you and then I check out your channel and I was really shocked with the things that they were saying, but in the things that you were saying really shocked me even more. And it frightens me. And it felt like my safe net have been kind of crumbled pretty much. And so I went into panic and then I had even more anxiety. And then I ended up like having a real bad mental meltdown. And now I'm in therapy. So thankfully, but therapy just going to help me kind of work through, you know, all the lies and how much I've given up for this organization and the things that I could have been doing in my life right now, but I'm not going to go into this. Hopefully in the future, um, when I'm out and you want to do an interview, I would love to come on your channel and just kind of talk about being a fourth generation Jehovah Witness and how much I feel like the organization of taking my life away from me. But anyways, now my mom, so all through this process, I was always talking to her. And now that I've done research, I don't believe that guy exists anymore. I don't believe that Jehovah Witnesses has any truth. I don't even believe any religion have any truth. But my mom called me one day to ask me why I wasn't going to meeting. And then I told her, and then she had been calling me constantly, just trying to get me to go back to meeting and giving me scriptures and stuff like that. But as a person, I am so trained as a Jehovah Witness to, you know, not know, like, feel guilty. And so even though I don't believe these things, I still feel guilty every time she calls me. And I still feel guilty when she talk about Amigella coming and how, you know, there's conflict in Ukraine, what it proves. And even though logically I know these things are not true, but I don't even know how to respond. So how would you say I should respond when my mom call me and say these things? I don't want her to shut down on me, but I also want to be able to express myself until I'm ready to at least go to the others to tell them that I'm disassociating. Hopefully this is clear. Thanks.
Bye-bye. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing your situation with me and my viewers. Um, I think it's incredibly brave of you to open up like that. Um, mental health is a very sensitive and very personal uh, subject. You know I, know, I know firsthand that it's not easy to talk about, you know, mental health issues publicly. Um, and it takes lots of courage to do that. So thank you so much. And I'm sure many will relate to your situation. You've already done the, the most urgent thing I would have recommended. And I always have to recommend in situations like yours, which is your seeking out therapy. Well done. That's a really sensible thing to do. It sounds like elders uh, have been trying every which way to divert you from taking this urgent step or at least um, make you procrastinate in belief that somehow this is your fault or somehow you need to be more spiritual or you need to stop being anxious. <laughs> yes, apparently that's how anxiety works. You can just say to someone, stop being anxious and abracadabra, they stop being anxious. That's the mental health wisdom of Jehovah's organization for you. But yeah, we've, we've heard it all before, haven't we, as Jehovah's Witnesses? They really do not like the idea of their members consulting mental health professionals. I think, you know, the obvious reason for that is that they're aware that in some, not all cases, because it's not the job of a mental health professional to tell people you're in a cult or tell a person they're in a cult, but they're aware that in, in some cases, this process of, of self-evaluation, of digging into what's causing people's fears and traumas, will uncover the fact that the religion is a large part of it. You know, you've described um, feeling frightened, feeling panic, feeling anxiety. You've described even now, while you're in therapy, feelings of guilt and dread about Armageddon. So this is a, an organization that really does a number on people. And of course, when people seek out um, professionals who deal with mental health, um, I think a good therapist is going to spot the elephant in the room and, and tactfully find a way of helping people to realize, you know, where these anxieties uh, are coming from. So yes, you're really to be commended for taking this incredibly responsible step of um, dealing with these issues in the proper way. Your question is about your mother and you want to know how to deal with her efforts to salvage you. I found it interesting that at the beginning you said that you're trying to figure out how to get out. Well, it sounds like, at least mentally, you're very much out. But perhaps through your mother, you maybe feel still tethered to the religion in some way. Clearly, you are anxious about the potential for your mother to start shunning you if you are outed as, quote-unquote, an apostate or someone who no longer believes the religion to be true. And again, many people will relate to that situation. It's important to reiterate that you shouldn't feel under any pressure to uh, disassociate or to fade. You know, either of those two options are on the table. I wish there were more options. It's because it's such an incredibly abusive organisation that it's narrowed down to that binary choice of do you do you fade, do you keep quiet, do you talk the talk and walk the walk where necessary with believing loved ones, or do you quit cold turkey? There should be more options than that. Unfortunately, there aren't. Speaking to believing friends and family is always a minefield, as I've repeatedly said. But I think in this situation you are well within your rights to establish boundaries. It sounds like your mother is trespassing 
uh, clear boundaries that need to be established or perhaps haven't been made clear to her. If I were in your shoes, I think, well, communication is quite often um, the, the solution in these situations, but it needs to be done in a certain way and with tactfulness and respect, but, you know, with firmness, I would be sitting down with her and I would be saying, look, religion and faith are deeply spiritual things. I can't tell you what to believe and I wouldn't tell you what to believe because you are your own person and that's for you to figure out yourself. So by the same token, I think it's a very reasonable request and a request that I must insist on that you respect my individual right to figure out my beliefs for myself, that you quit this these efforts to make me believe as you believe, um, which I'm finding very traumatizing. And if she asks, you could mention that um, it's a actually a, a syndrome, religious trauma syndrome, part of basically PTSD. You can traumatize people by pushing beliefs on them of a certain kind. And I would just say, Google religious trauma syndrome. What you're doing is traumatizing me by inflicting beliefs on me that I find at this moment in my life very, very distressing. If you really love me, this is surely something that would be the furthest thing from your mind to do. And I must insist that you stop doing this. That's not to say I've made any firm decisions on what I want to do, uh, what action I want to take. But I can tell you this, what you're doing isn't helping me. So if you want us to continue to have a good relationship, I suggest you find ways to communicate with me that don't involve um, violating these boundaries, these reasonable boundaries, and putting me in an intensely uncomfortable situation regarding what is a deeply personal matter, namely my religious beliefs and my faith. Something along those lines is what I would say. I'm aware, I'm aware it's easier said than done. And sometimes when you are in a situation like this, which is intensely emotional and you're speaking to someone you care about and they're hurting you, you know, it's easier said than done to say the right things or use all the words that you really, really want to get across. Um, but however it's done, I think if you approach this conversation with the right attitude, namely, again, being firm but respectful, um, it's got to happen. There's got to be, in, in my opinion at least, there's got to be some laying down of, of reasonable boundaries because what your mother is doing is completely unacceptable. Another thing I would perhaps think about saying is, let's say it was as simple as you telling me things, as, as you giving me verses. So I'm like a computer and all you need to do is upload information to me and it will change who I am. Is that the sort of person you want me to be? Someone who just believes straight away whatever people tell them? Or do you want me to be persuaded? Do you want me to arrive at my beliefs based on reasoning them through myself? Because I certainly wouldn't like you to be the sort of person who would believe absolutely anything that I tell you or just swallow any reasoning or argumentation I give you. I would want you to challenge things. And I would want you to believe based on a thought process, based on critical thinking. If, if you're wanting me to completely abnegate 
from the critical thinking process and just swallow everything that you say, what does that say about your expectations of me as a as an adult? Then you know, surely you want me to <laughs> be a, a normal adult who is capable of forming their own conclusions and having their own opinions. Surely you don't just want me to parrot your beliefs back to you. Would that really give you any satisfaction if that's all I was, just someone who parroted your beliefs to you? I don't know. So maybe a few ideas there for you. But again, I really do sympathize with your situation. It's one, again, this is all too common. I think it's worth noting as well that um, regarding what you said about feeling guilty, you said you feel guilty um, when she brings up Armageddon and saying that things like the war in Ukraine or the pandemic are proof of Armageddon and it gives you kind of some sense of dread. Don't feel guilty and certainly don't feel unworthy or in any way deficient purely because this coding got lodged so deeply into your brain. It's a perfectly normal thing. Even I've experienced it in the relatively recent past. You know, I'm in a pandemic, a deadly pandemic, and oh, my house is shaking, you know. Hang on, Armageddon bingo. <laughs> I'm crossing off a few boxes here. It's it's just a split second, a fraction of a second, maybe just one or two latent neurons firing in my brain, but it was long enough to register. And then the rational mind takes over. Then you're able to remind yourself, ah, no, it was all a fantasy. It was all a, a grisly fantasy that I was convinced to believe that was indoctrinated into me almost from birth. So if it can affect me, of course it can affect you. It's it's very early days and it's important to manage your expectations about yourself. Um, I wouldn't expect too much from your mum. She will, I'm afraid, no matter how well the conversation goes, almost certainly um, have, what's the word, relapses, <laughs> where she tries to salvage you. It's just the way things work, unfortunately. It would, I would be very surprised if she completely respected your boundaries moving forward. But if you can get her to at least dial things down a bit, if you can get her to at least relent to some degree so that you're not just constantly being bombarded with these traumatizing conversations, I would regard that as a success, even if occasionally she reverts to type and does what the organization expects her to do and tries to salvage her daughter and stop her from dying at Armageddon. Messed up situation, isn't it? But this is the reality that we're dealing with when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses and trying to leave. So I hope some or all of what I've said is useful there. Thanks again for leaving the message. If you would like to leave a message, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message on my channel. But that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching.